really gonna make me say it. Mr. Krabs is using Pearl's dead mother's carcass to make Krabby Patty. You two, you see, Conspiracy Part 1. We saw Conspiracy Part 2. And we saw Conspiracy Part 3. Now, we watching Spongebob Conspiracy, the evolution theory. It's all connect. Part 1, 2, and 3 connected to part 4. Like, subscribe. Are the Bikini Bottom citizens the result of nuclear radiation? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Who is Pearl's mother? What is the Krabby Patty's secret formula? These are by far the three biggest questions I don't know. show SpongeBob. And Mr. Krabs and today really I'm going to be answering all three of them actual father? with just one theory. Get ready what happened to Mr. Spongebob Pearl conspiracy you'll ever see. Pearl this mother. is the evolution theory. Okay. Pearl we only see like two wheel, right? We're back with another SpongeBob conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Guess I'm the SpongeBob guy now. That's that's all I make. You guys sure love these SpongeBob theories. Alex Bale out with another video. The makers of SpongeBob interfere to put in their own message. Yep. To brainwash you people. Squilliam yeah. sends the doctor in. He's not really a doctor. He's just trying to infiltrate that little round thing on his head there. Oh my God. Thank God for Alex Bale. Look at that. He's helping me prove my point. You know what? That is awesome. Maybe some of you love them a little too much. Yeah, you know, way I got too much. Other videos, right? I, I, I make films and stuff too. Anyone want to watch those? Anyways, by far the most popular SpongeBob theory mm -hmm. out there is the Bikini Atoll nuclear radiation theory. Right. It's pretty simple. It's been confirmed that Bikini Bottom is actually actually beneath a real-life place called Bikini Atoll. From 1946 to 1958, the United States did nuclear tests there, devastating the area and leaving it radioactive even to this day. The theory states that the reason why the citizens of Bikini Bottom can talk and have formed advanced societies is because of mutations caused by these nuclear tests. And that's about the whole theory. Even though there's tons and tons of videos about it, none of them actually go in depth with it or really look through the show for evidence. You talking about, you talking about, that if Alex Bale is making you talking about a damn goal? Deep and deeper to see what what picking a bottle or picking a toll it really is. Like if they went deeper and deeper and and, and pick out each pieces of it and see where in the city happened, then yeah. But I know people don't really do that. But if I could. Then y'all already figure out what the king told or the king bomb really is. Then it's not gonna be some baby surface level analysis. I will watch every single episode of SpongeBob. I will read every page of the goddamn Wikipedia. If I'm making a theory, okay. then you guys know. Alright, 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 Alex. So really Alex, sort of Alex you're doing way too much right now. There is so much more here than anyone thinks. Get ready, because today we're going to be solving the biggest mysteries in the history of SpongeBob SquarePants and changing the way you look at the entire show. So without further ado, let's begin the theory. In order to find out whether the Bikini Atoll theory is true, we first have to determine whether fish talking and being so intelligent is unique to Bikini Bottom, or if that's just the way the SpongeBob yeah. universe works. You know, it could just be that all animals in this world are able to talk, and that's completely normal because at the end of the day, SpongeBob is still just a cartoon. Well, if we take a look at Season 10, Episode 10, Feral Friends, we get a bit of a hint about how the SpongeBob world works. In this episode, a green moon appears and transforms- Oh, I remember that. Less cartoony, real life versions if you, if you go back, like look, if you go back and watch episode 2 on my channel, uh, you can tell deep into each part of that video, you can see what what the between bottom character really is. Like, if they came to real life, they would actually look like actual creature. And they um, came all in time period. But no, in that video, in the video, when, I mean, if you see, uh, Spongebob out of water, you can see them talking and stuff, walking and everything, and I, like, wow. You can see them doing all of this, but if they came out all the time period, they look like, exactly like this. Spongebob? Patrick? 
Just like in real life, they can't talk and end up trying to eat each other. The French narrator is watching all of this unfold and he says this very important line. Anyway. I have been monitoring the behavior of the green moon all day. It is called Neptune's moon. Neptune. Every 100 years, Neptune moon. Evolves everyone in okay. Bikini Bottom into primal fish. Every 100 years, it de evolves everyone in Bikini Bottom into primal fish. So this implies that the characters in Bikini Bottom are more evolved and were once like these primal fish. But this doesn't prove that the evolution only exists in Bikini Bottom. It could still be a worldwide phenomenon. Remember that bonus DVD clip I found in my television theory? Yeah. It was about humans studying fish in Bikini Bottom because of their intelligence. Len Lovin scientists have tried to learn the secrets of intelligence. Their studies led them to the sea, where the citizens of one undersea colony demonstrated a genius so enormous, the scientists felt compelled to record their actions for use in teaching mankind how to live better. This makes it sound an awful lot like the fish in Bikini Bottom oh, uh, actually are uniquely evolved and it's not some worldwide yeah. case. Then, in the Spongebob 20 year uh -huh. anniversary special, Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, we get a major piece of evidence for this theory. Spongebob and Patrick take a tour of the surface world and eventually go to a fish store and see some very realistic, less evolved fish. What kind of monsters would want to keep fish folk in jail like this? They're so beautiful. They can't talk back to Spongebob and Patrick, and they're actually able to swim freely through the water instead of being affected by gravity. They are clearly showing us that both evolved and primitive fish exist in this universe at the same time. Oh, 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 I, 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 characters represented as realistic fish like this, but only when they're out of water, never while they're still in water like these fish. We even see this again in so, the beginning of the So, if they still in water, they the don't be actual home, primal fish. These realistic primal hmm. fish, but eventually Eventually we get to Bikini Bottom where the more evolved fish live. So there you go, whoa, direct whoa, whoa, whoa. proof that the citizens of Bikini Bottom are uniquely evolved. This is a very deliberate world building choice for the creators to make. Yeah. So I guess that kind of confirms the Bikini Atoll theory. Theory confirmed! Yeah, 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 yeah we finished, right? Hold on. The end. As much as I'd love to hold on, hold on, hold on. complete, hold on, hold on. there's actually yeah, one yeah. major piece of evidence that gives me some resistance. Mm -hmm. Something I've never seen anyone else bring up when talking about this theory. Prehistoric Bikini Bottom. Whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, UGG or SB129 uh -huh. that show Bikini Bottom millions of years in the past, but we still see evolved versions of SpongeBob and Patrick. Sure, they may not be super intelligent or advanced, but they're still clearly way more evolved than the primitive, realistic versions we see in Feral Friends or in the Fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. we yeah. are seeing these evolutions millions of years before the Bikini Atoll tests. Well, oh, 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 yeah. I think the only conclusion is that the Bikini Atoll theory just isn't true. I mean, and not? something as hold on, hold on, Alex. Alex, hold on, hold on, hold on, up, Alex. But whatever caused it to hold us millions of years ago, hold on, Alex. Could have been the Bikini Atoll. It could, it could, it could, it could, it could, it make no what sense. Really caused the evolution. In the entire show, the only thing we've seen that directly affects the evolution of characters is the Green Moon and Feral Friends. <laughs> Except the French narrator specifically calls it Neptune's moon. It is called Neptune's moon. Mm -hmm. Named after the ruler of the seven seas, King Neptune. King Neptune is a uh. character who's been around since the beginning of the sea. He's a character who the Bikini Bottom citizens view as their god. And he's a character who has the ability to change fish into other forms. What the? Nope. King Neptune used his magic to turn the fish of the sea into more evolved subjects for him to rule over. He's the one who's been behind it all this time. Now, I could spend this entire video talking about King Neptune and his weird continuity and contradictions in the show, but I'll save that for another theory. What I much more about are the we, implications we, 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 of having we, 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 part, part fish part five. We, we, in the part sea. Part. Now, the this, this all. evolution isn't specific to just Bikini Bottom. We've seen different cities and places far across the ocean that still have talking fish, which makes sense because the marine life in Bikini Bottom has evolved to resemble humans, so it's no surprise that just like humans, they've expanded beyond Bikini Bottom and colonized other areas of the sea. But now, I have an interesting question for you. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship between evolved fish and primitive unevolved fish? Well, they probably just peacefully coexist in the sea without bothering each other. You know, just like real life humans and animals. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. In season 3, episode 10, mm -hmm. The Krusty Krab training video, there is this hilarious, absurd moment when they're talking about Mr. Krabs. After the war, Krabs stayed 
secluded in a deep depression that seemed endless. Like, what war happened in Bikini Bottom? They just tell us this and then completely drop it. But with this new context, is it possible that crabs fought in a war against these primitive wild fish of the sea? I mean, let's remember, you know, friends, some of those de-evolved fish were massive compared to the evolved fish, and yeah. they immediately started attacking each other. Ah, uh, the battle for the survival of the fittest rages on in the animal kingdom. So yeah, in order for the Bikini Bottom citizens to survive and expand, they would probably break into some kind of war. And from the sounds of it, this war must have been pretty brutal to put Mr. Krabs into such Yeah. A but I'm getting ahead of myself. I, Is there I, actually any evidence that proves the war Mr. Krabs fought in was specifically this evolutionary war? Well, through the few- I, I wanna know, I wanna know. Mr. Krabs know. served in the Navy. Yeah, we already know, we know. know. ...ships on an ocean, even though they're already underwater. This is actually a real-life phenomenon where certain parts of the sea can have a higher level of salinity, and it looks like an underwater ocean. Mm -hmm. Shout out Miss Parks, my high school marine biology teacher. We also know from mm -hmm. maps of Bikini Bottom that the town is surrounded by this underwater ocean. So that places Mr. Krabs' war outside of Bikini Bottom where this evolutionary war would have to take place. Then if we took a look at Mr. Krabs' home, we see it is full of memorabilia from his past days in the Navy. But hidden within here is something that will absolutely Boy. blow your mind and answer one of the biggest oh, questions what? on the show. Hanging what? there on his wall is a picture of a massive whale next to a ship. You don't think that could be... No, it can't be. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Could you, can, can it be like Mr. Crab kill mm, me, Pearl Mom? Nah, nah, nah. It can't, it can't be, right? Pearl's mother? Pearl is Mr. Crab's whale dog. Yeah. The show never really explains how a crab can be the father of a whale, but most yeah, people assume she was adopted. People have been speculating about who Pearl's biological mother is for years, and I think we finally just found our answer. We see two photos of this whale on a ship in Season 3, Episode 9, yeah. just one episode before we find out Mr. Crab's fought in a war. So Spy! Hit the like button! And the bell! It's a spy! Since he's among all of Mr. Krabs' Navy stuff, I think we can assume that this is something he encountered and not just some random picture of a whale on a ship above the ocean. The whale is massive compared to the ship. We've seen adult whales in Bikini Bottom before, but they are nothing compared to the size of this whale. Yeah. This has a much closer resemblance to Pearl when she de-evolved in Feral Friends and became massive. So this has to be an unevolved primitive whale, and the picture clearly shows them fighting. Not only does this prove that there was a war between evolved and primitive mm -hmm. fish, but Mr. Krabs definitely fought in it. But this also implies something very dark. Mr. Krabs killed Pearl's mother. Holy mo- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The show to Pearl's mother- Hold on, he, he, he had to- uh, mother he, of Pearl. Mr. Krabs had to do something. To our pearl mother. Holy mother of pearl! Holy mother of pearl! He uses it in places something like holy crap or dear See? god, only yeah. saying it when something truly shocking or yeah. terrible happens. Because he knows the terrible thing that happened yeah, to like, his mother. Why yeah. did Mr. Krabs go into such a deep so depression? Because he's haunted by yeah. what he's done. And the smoking harpoon to prove it is right there on his wall. So, that leaves us with an important question. Oh, I, I, I really didn't pay attention After to that harpoon. After children's mother, he probably realized yeah. he had an infant daughter who had the evolutionary genes. Instead of leaving her to die, he adopted her as his own. All while keeping the dark secret that he was responsible for her mother's death. Woo! Childhood ruined yet? Well, don't worry. So you didn't even tell Maybe Pearl? Even worse. Well, hold on. What, what, what about Pearl's father? Really dark. What about Pearl's father? Alan, what about Pearl's father? Still here? And about okay. her father. So here's a fun question. What's the deal with all the pets in Bikini Bottom? How come most fish are basically humans when yeah. a snail or a worm acts like a pet? Well, just like humans have domesticated wild animals, that one, that one it no should sense. be no surprise that evolved fish have domesticated primitive fish as pets. Unlike the massive primitive fish at the Bikini yeah, Bottom, I, I, I can see, I can see. There's also smaller primitive fish like jellyfish, snails, spirit worms, seahorses, and clams that the Bikini Bottom citizens were able to form a symbiotic relationship with. Aww, and I thought you said this was going to be the dark part, Alan. They're living peacefully together. Yes. Nice. Okay, if you, okay, like, you got me. Come on. Here's another fun question. Where do the citizens of Bikini Bottom get their food? I mean, sure, some of it is plant-based, but there sure does seem to be an awful lot of meat-based food. You got, you got the crab patty, you got the turkey, like, you got actual human food. So, 
ain't no way that our type of fool can just reappear to a, a clean bomb. How? That don't make no sense. Cause how they get all the food and then all the stuff to this the bikini bottom citizens eat primitive fish. Haha, <laughs> it's not cannibalism. If wait, 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 wait. Right? There's no moral dilemma there. In season three, episode thirteen, we see direct proof of this when the characters are using for primitive clams. This is something completely normal in this world. And then there's the chum. Wait a minute. Shells chum. Chum. Chum is literally just ground up fish. The show isn't even hiding this. Now, we don't really see too much of the meat Yo! inside of Bikini Bottom, and I'm not surprised they're keeping it on the DL, you know, with the whole Yo, 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 There's one secret to making food. Hey, Yo! Yo, cannibalism? Secret in the Yo! Show. You already know what I'm gonna say the Krabby Patty secret formula. Throughout the show, there's been lots of contradictory evidence about the Krabby Patty. Uh, I want to know. Season four, in real season, life, Krabby Patty is crab 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 asking me out a cow for us. Formula? So, I want to know. But in season five, episode one, what the Krabby Patty for y'all is for us and me out our sneaky um cow. For us, our Krabby Patty me out a cow. So what y'all could have thing me out? Sometimes is that really it's what it is? Sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a secret song, yeah. and any glimpse we get of the formula is just random nonsense. There is a ton of contradictory evidence out there, but I think this might all be intentional. I still want to know. People off, Mr. Krabs has spread misinformation about the Krabby Patty formula. In fact, he's already done this in season three, episode 18, by hiding a fake formula for playing Fine that says he's the secret. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mixed together with the most important ingredient of all. Four heaping pounds of freshly ground plankton? And the contradictions aren't just inside the show. That ain't true. The that ain't true. Crew members once said that Krabby Patties are vegetarian right. and contain no meat. But I've always been a little suspicious about what the creators say. They've also that, said that yeah, it, that, that don't make no food, sense. Except they clearly do with chum, clam fishing, and all the many, many gags where fish turn into food. Y'all take care of you do already. Publicly acknowledge chum. this because that could create a controversy. But they could still sneak. This yeah, like y'all not public acknowledge it. But y'all still sneak it in. It's strange. We so, never really see yeah, the crabs get the crab pay me as he come from. It. It's almost like he has all the like, like we know we know where the uh ingredients come from. Like the bun, the lettuce, the um cheese, the tomato, ketchup, like you like literally y'all use your own kind time to make those stuff. But where the crap and meat come from? Cause ain't no way y'all be able to create a hamburger meat that perfect We all in kind. Meat stockpiled somewhere. Hmm, what primitive meat can Mr. Krabs have access to? Maybe he's been holding on to something from the war. Hmm, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mr. Krabs have killed during the war that he doesn't want anyone to find out about. Something big enough to supply him with meat for years without needing more. Hmm, what could that be? Are they gonna make me say it? Mr. Krabs is using Pearl's dead mother's carcass to make Krabby Patties. We did it! Yeah, we solved the mystery! We did it! <laughs> so no, 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 it's the mighty Moby Dollar! Moby Dollar. A direct reference to Moby Dick. A story about hunting a whale. Are you kidding Yo. me? 
And that is the evolution theory. I warned you guys this would be a dark one. The Bikini Atoll theory, King Neptune, Pearl's mother, the Krabby Patty formula, we hit everything in this theory. Even if you don't agree with all of it, you gotta admit a lot of this makes sense. Eugene Crab's aspirations for money and greed have caused him to do terrible, terrible things. At least his love for Pearl seems to be real, so yeah. maybe there's some small amount of good in him. And even though Pearl's mother probably provides tons of meat, eventually he's gonna run out and he'll have to face what he's done. Well, unless of course there's another whale he has access to. Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mr. Krabs no, no, wouldn't do that. He loves yeah, Pearl. He's yeah, not just raising her for Krabby yeah. Patty meats. Yeah. Even yeah. Mr. Krabs isn't that much of a monster. Every sight I've ever seen to the sweetest sound I've heard. I'd gladly give up everything for all the money that I've earned. Huh. <laughs> well, already then, that's the end of that theory. Just gonna end it here before there's any no, more no, dark plot Alex, twists. You guys Alex, have been insanely uh, supportive with it? these SpongeBob theories, so I guess I have guessing. to make more. I've been your host, Alex Bale. Thanks for watching. That's it? It's, it's too quiet. Yeah, yo, it's way too quiet right now. It's way too quiet. Uh, hey, just want to let you know that I, uh, I think I'm gonna take a break from the SpongeBob videos for a little bit. Who are you talking to? Uh, it, it's not you. I mean, I mean, the videos are great. People, people love them. It's just, I think I want to go back to making actual films for a bit. Who are you talking to? Uh, oh, okay then. Uh, thanks for everything. I guess I'll just... Who are I'll you just see talking you to? When I found you... Unnoticed and unloved, but now you have millions of views. You have sponsors. Why would you forsake them? I just, you know, I don't, I don't want to really make these videos forever. You know, I don't want to be known as the, the SpongeBob guy. <laughs> My boy, you really think they will care about your little films? I am your muse. I have given you the gift of knowledge. If you wish to go back to anonymity, then be my guest. But I know who you really are. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. And to see another battle strat theory right here. And to see another Spongebob conspiracy